Chapter 4 Finding One's Voice I bring you blessings, my dear friends. Last time I talked to you about the difficulty of this path and the dangers of approaching it with the illusion that a few meditations and some miracle formula will make all your earthly troubles disappear. Another great misunderstanding is the mistaken idea that to follow the path I'm showing you means neglecting your life in other ways. Some of you may believe that devoting a certain amount of time and effort for your spiritual development will take too much time away from your daily struggle for livelihood. You think you may not have enough strength left for your professional efforts and thus fear that your finances may suffer. Others may believe that not enough time would remain for them to enjoy life and so on. But this way of thinking is so very wrong because spiritual development in general and this path in particular is not an extra activity in your life that you simply add on to your other activities, thus diminishing the strength, time, effort and zest that would otherwise be available for all your other duties and pleasures. Actually, it is quite the contrary, my friends. The truth is that this path of purification represents the foundation of your life. It is the ground you walk on. When you decide to take it, you simply shift the tracks of your life into different channels. After a while, even though your main problems will not disappear from one day to the next, this has the effect of awakening in you a new life spark that furnishes you with a heretofore unfamiliar strength acumen, vitality and ability to enjoy life as you have never done before. Thus you will do better work in your profession, you will get more benefit from your time of pleasure, you will get more pleasure out of life whatever you may do, whereas now life is still more or less flat for most of you. These are the results I can promise if you work spiritually in the way I'm showing you. They won't become apparent at once but only after a certain time, after some inner victories, then you will see that this path is well worth taking, even from your selfish point of view and even though your main conflicts will have not yet disappeared. This is so because on this path you will eventually find out where your deeper feelings, reactions and thoughts, if not in your deeds, you have broken many a spiritual law. This realization will enable you to gradually change your inner currents and emotional reactions and this will automatically free a strength and life force that was previously locked or blocked. So I do not promise you a miracle that will be given to you as a reward from heaven, but show you plainly and logically that this path cannot help work out because it is based on the law of cause and effect which works quite naturally and impersonally. So I ask you not to consider the decision to take this path as some additional activity in your life, such as taking up some new kind of lesson that might rob you of time and effort you could give to other necessary or desirable things. Consider rather this path as the foundation of your life. It will make it into a well-integrated whole. For if you can solve your inner problems and errors, you must eventually also solve your outer problems. By the same token, you'll get so much more out of all the good things in life, happiness, joy, pleasure, if your soul becomes healthy again, if your inner reactions can conform to spiritual law, only then will you be capable of happiness. For how many people are capable of happiness? Very few, my friends. For only those who embrace life wholeheartedly, without fear, without self-pity, without being afraid of being hurt, follow a very important spiritual law. And only those who can do so are capable of experiencing real happiness. So everything you do in life will have more flavour, more awareness and more life spark if you follow the path of self-knowledge. It will not take more time than is reasonable according to your life circumstances. All of you without exception are capable with little willpower and determination and proper organization of your everyday life to spend on average half an hour a day on your spiritual development. You spend time on your physical body, feed it, rest it and cleanse it. 
you certainly do not feel that this takes something away from your other duties or pleasures. You take it for granted and this is a necessary, self-evident part of your life. Yet when the question arises whether to do the same for your soul, then fears, doubt and questions bar your way. But they cannot do so if you take the trouble to think reasonably about this matter of spiritual development, my friends. However, you are not thinking reasonably about it because you do not evaluate these doubts as to their proper merit. You have them because you are inspired by your own lower self. As long as you do not recognize how this lower self works, how it manifests and in what devious ways it hides behind handy excuses, you will not be able to master it. Not only those traits which are commonly called faults are a hindrance for you and thus directly or indirectly harm others, but also your fears which are not generally considered to be faults. You do not realize that your fears cause great harm not only in your own life, but also in the lives of others. Your fears also hide your light of love, understanding and truth. So being on this path is not only a matter of overcoming your character weaknesses. Overcoming your own fear is of equal importance. For as long as there is fear in your heart, you harm other people. I have promised to show you how you should go about actually starting on this path. There are many ways and each individual reacts to them differently. But I will give you certain basic guidelines to go by as you make your own plan. You all know that to gain self-knowledge is of imperative importance. Now, how can this be done? The first step will be to think as objectively as you possibly can about yourself, about all your good qualities and all your faults. Write down a list as I have often advised because writing helps you to concentrate on and condense what you have found out so far. This will prevent your losing your hold on this knowledge. The words in black and white can shed a new light of understanding and promote a tiny little bit of detachment in your concentration of yourself. Later on, when you have gained further knowledge about yourself and about your conscious subconscious trends, you'll be able to connect certain pieces of your first found knowledge, provided they are clearly and concisely expressed. The Law of Brotherhood After you have done this conscientiously, the next step would be to ask someone else, someone who knows you very well, to tell you what he or she honestly thinks about you. I know that it takes a little courage to do that, Consider this your first effort to overcome a little bit of your pride. By doing so, you will have attained some victory that will already free you of one little inner chain. It is very important not to do this work completely alone. To really open your heart to another person brings a spiritual help that you could not receive by yourself. It is due to the law of brotherhood. For people who are always alone, no matter how hard they work, no matter how intelligently they read or study, no matter how much self-honesty they try to have, become locked in a certain vacuum that bars a complete understanding and evaluation of the self, an understanding which automatically flows into them if they can open themselves to another soul. By remaining all alone, you violate the law of brotherhood in some subtle way. Not isolating yourself requires a certain amount of humility which does not come easily at the very beginning but after some time it will become second nature. Soon you will be able to talk openly about your difficulties, your weaknesses and your problems and receive criticism. The latter of course is equally healthy for your soul. Each one of you who has already tried opening up will confirm that merely discussing a problem you have kept to yourself will cause it to lose its exaggerated proportions and some of its fearful aspects. Being yourself as you really are with at least one person with a minimum of masks and defences is a very healthy medicine. At the same time, you offer an act of love to the other person whom you help more by showing your own human weaknesses than by trying to appear superior. Your partner will do the same for you. So try to organize this with a friend. 
you will see after a while how helpful and fruitful this will be. It will give you food for thought. You will help each other and you will learn a lot in brotherhood, in humility and in detached understanding. I would advise you to ask those who know you really well. No matter what they believe, they will respect you for your sincere endeavour to improve, to learn about your faults and for listening to them. You can ask them in the right way, explaining to them that four eyes often see more than two and that you want to improve and will not be hurt or angry with them, even if they say something that may seem unjust to you. And when your friends or family do tell your faults, think about them calmly. Someone may say something that at first will seem entirely unjust and hurtful to you. You may also, for that matter, be even more hurt if a truth is told to you. Even if you have the sincere conviction that the criticism is an injustice, try to evaluate it nonetheless. There may be only one grain of truth in it. The other person may just see you a little differently or see you just on a superficial level. He or she may not have the full understanding of what lies underneath, why you react in this way and all the complicated mechanisms of the workings of the soul. He or she may not choose the right words, but the one grain of truth in what is said may open a new door of understanding for you. It may not even be something entirely new for you, but it is often necessary to consider the same fault or trait from new angles under different light so as to understand the various effects this same fault may have on your surroundings. If you take all the faults you are beginning to recognize more and more clearly into your daily meditation, and if you wish is truly sincere, you have made the best beginning imaginable. Train yourself to observe your inner reactions when you deal with the unpleasant within you. This is of utmost importance. I have begun this lecture by saying that the lower self constantly resists your endeavors. Here you have a wonderful opportunity to observe your undisguised lower self as it works and reacts. Watch it as you would a third person. Be a little less involved in it. Put a little distance between your powers of self-observation and the reaction of your lower self, your ego, your hurt, your vanity that becomes involved when you are dealing with the unpleasant side of your personality. By thus recognizing your own reactions and understanding them, perhaps humoring them a little and not taking yourself so deadly seriously in this respect, you will gain another step up on the ladder. But I admonish you not to expect this awareness to happen from day one to the next. It means constant work, and after some time of regular work each day, even for only half an hour, you will make progress. You will come to the point when you feel quite clearly the distance between the real you and your little hurt ego, and you can humor it a little bit without being so very much in it. Once you have accomplished this, the door will open for further self-understanding. So begin by making your own inventory of faults. After you have done your best in this respect and have also asked someone who knows you very well about your faults, compare their observations with your own findings. These efforts are a wonderful beginning for everyone. They will not be in vain, I promise you. If every day you do some self observation work and meditate on some of the pertinent words I am giving here, you will certainly be successful long before actual results can manifest in your life. A feeling of deep contentment and peace will come to you often. The three main faults. Now I will mention three main faults in the human character. These are three main faults from which stem directly or indirectly all your various individual shortcomings are self-will, pride and fear. This is very important for you to realize. You may not think fear of fault, but I am telling you that it is. A faultless person would be unafraid. You all know that the opposite of fear is love, but this knowledge is itself will not be sufficient for you to understand why fear is a fault. 
first you should understand that these three main faults are connected with one another. It would hardly be possible for you to have one or two of these faults without the third. But what may be possible is that out of the three, one or two may be unconscious, while the third is quite strongly apparent even to yourself. Thus, it is very important to write your daily review and to check your reactions to all you have felt during the day in response to often seemingly unimportant incidents. If you try to formulate concisely an unpleasant inner reaction of yours, you will always come to the conclusion that most of the time there is an element of fear involved in it. Fear that perhaps other people do not do what you wish or do not react according to your liking. In other words, if there is a strong self-will, the fear is there automatically that the self-will will not be gratified and that your pride may be hurt. If you had no pride, you would not have to fear that it could be hurt. If you had no self-will, you would not have to fear that it would not be gratified. If you begin to check your various impressions of the day, and your reactions, you can see where the element of fear comes in and whether it is connected to self-will and pride and to what extent. So begin to observe these inner reactions of yours and analyze them in these terms without trying to change yourself immediately. Because feelings cannot be changed by a mere act of will, but they will change if you learn first to observe them. Daily Review the practice of the daily review is a powerful tool. You do not have to be far along in self-development in order to com accomplish this. Anyone can do it. All you need to do is review the day and think of all the events that have caused you disharmony in any manner, shape or form. Even if at the beginning you cannot understand why, just put down the incident and what you felt. When you have done this for a while, a pattern will evolve. It may still not give you a clue to what is wrong in your inner makeup, but you will at least see some repetition that points to the fact that there must be something in you that is causing the disharmony. If unhappy events or feelings recur constantly, this is a clue to your own soul. These repeated occurrences, along with your reaction to them, may vary in two or three ways, but there must be a basic underlying problem which you can learn to recognize. This will not take more than 10 or 15 minutes every day, which should certainly be possible for each one of you. You do not have to write down everything that has disturbed your sense of harmony during the course of the day. You do not have to write down everything that has disturbed your sense of harmony during the course of a day. Just jot down certain keywords. By regularly doing this, you will succeed in making the unconscious conscious and you will discover your own inner trends. After doing this for a while, you will most certainly recognize definite patterns in your life which you cannot become aware of otherwise. You will recognize these patterns by certain constant happenings and occurrences in your life and the way in which you react to them. That is all you should do at present. There is no magic trick to it. After you have kept the daily review for a while, read all daily review notes through and recollect the incidents with your reactions. See whether you can at least sense a pattern. Ask yourself, where can I find the point in myself where I deviate from some divine law? Then begin to think of your various faults which you have already discovered. Compare and connect these patterns with your list of faults. Ask yourself questions as to what your feelings are, what your desired currents really want, and whether these feelings and currents are truly in accordance with divine law. This is the way to get right into the middle of this path. Without this help, it would be extremely difficult, perhaps impossible, to gain the self-knowledge which is the essence and the key to this path, and without which you cannot reach divinity within yourself. It takes so very little time, and I beg all of you for your own sake to do it. I'll retire now with blessings of a special kind that are coming to each one of you, my dear ones. The love of God touches all of you. Be in peace, being God.